What's happening, gang? It's your boy Retro back again with another reaction video. Yeah, yeah. Today we got another huge update. I know you guys could probably already tell it is going down just by that title alone. Definitely going to see this one as we're witnessing yet another explosion on set of Fox was the five. We got Jessica Tarlaw working her way out the door of the set of the five in this newest update. As we're seeing that Trump derangement syndrome is truly taking over, guys. I'm excited to get into it. So I'm gonna hop straight into it. Just make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Before we get into it, you guys, hit that like button. Also with that subscribe button for your boy. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it, folks. Check this one out. Like I know that <laughs> A lot of people said there were bombshells in here. I mean, I read it and I felt like I felt like I'd heard and seen yeah. all of this before. That's they're trying to revive the corpse of January 6th. I, I have to say, though, uh, this is an improvement over 2020, because in this case, this election interference is done right in front of you, you know, from a combination <laughs> of lawfare and the media embrace. You got to go back to February 4th, 2021, when Time magazine published an article boasting of the conspiracy of business titans and uh, mm -hmm. left-wing activists to oppose what they called Trump's assault on democracy. You know, they described it as a vast shadow effort, an organized collection of operatives that changed voting systems and laws, secured hundreds of millions of dollars in public and private funding. They recruited you know, armies of poll workers got millions to vote by mail. Then they went after disin disinformation. They pressured social media companies. They called that election protection. So we, Republicans, independents, libertarians, were suspicious when we're told that our side or the person we support is an existential risk. Mm -hmm. We were told that everything was on the table. That, in fact, if you didn't cheat, that would be immoral. So what they did was they suppressed Hunter's laptop, which ushered in Joe's ill-gotten victory. So the suspicion of a rigged, rigged election, rigged, a rigged election is more than justified because you told us that. You told us what you were going to do. So I think that's a, a, an important context when you, when you approach a January 6th. It wasn't an attempt to overthrow the government. It was like... We're just reacting to what you guys said. Judge, uh, Andy McCarthy explained today that there's no like written rule that you yeah. don't do this before 30 days, but it was kind of an unwritten rule. But all these norms have been broken. Yeah, well, there, there's no question that the Department of Justice has had regulations over the years that say whenever there is an election on a state or national level, you do not release, number one, an investigation, an indictment, anything that may impact the election. And I always thought that it was 90 days. And you know, but it's clear here that what the judge did, Judge Chutkin, uh, with her briefing and her motions calendar, she made it so that uh, Jack Smith would be able to submit his papers on this date. And the president, the former president, should have his answers by October 17th. Now, I just heard that was changed about an hour ago until after the election. But at least if they had gotten their response in by the president's team, you could have had somewhat of a balanced review of this. This is definitely election interference and it's an attempt as the as the as the press made clear to try to remind voters you shouldn't vote for this guy because of all these things he did there's nothing new in this it's the same old stuff over and over again where hunter biden got the benefit of every doubt in every calendar and every schedule and every statute of limitations they're doing whatever they can to hurt donald trump and uh you know what's amazing is do you recall the sentencing for donald trump in new york city City by Judge uh, uh, Ergeron was delayed because he didn't want to impact the election, which is kind of amazing because he's about as biased, I thought, as you can get. But this judge, Chutkin, is even worse. She's like, let's let it all hang out right before the election. And wow, Judge Deneen brings up a very valid point. This is the same exact file. What Jack Smith just filed on Donald Trump, the 165 pages, guys, it's the same exact indictment. All he did, you gotta remember that the Supreme Court granted rule Donald Trump has that uh, presidential immunity blanketed him in all you know presidential acts or, or acts that were committed in the presidential capacity. Jack Smith just brought the indictment and refiled and said that instead of it was President Trump, it was personal citizen Trump. Everywhere where you've seen President Trump listed on the indictment, guys, it's the same exact thing. He's just trying to get in the way. We can see straight through it, guys. Oh my goodness. Well, 
conundrums that Trump finds himself in hasn't dented his support with Republicans. And so a lot of the media on the left were saying, oh, this is it. This is going to be the one. But I, I, do you think it's going to be the thing that turns Republicans against voting for him? No, I don't think so. It, and it has never polled as such. There are people who are persuaded by the argument that there is one party that cares about protecting democracy, and there's another party that will undermine democracy if it suits them. And J.D. Vance made that clear on the debate stage when he wouldn't answer Tim Walz's question. Undermining democracy, guys. She's trying to point the finger and saying that it's the right who's undermining democracy. And we're seeing they're coming after Donald Trump with everything but the kitchen sink in order to keep this guy from walking into that White House later on this year. I mean, come on. It's blatant. It's as clear as can be. Jessica Tarloff is once again lost, guys. It's them. And J.D. Vance made that clear on the debate stage when he wouldn't answer Tim Walz's question. Who's for voter Which, ID? That's, well, I'm just curious. First of all, because right. that's, that's that not there is no vo voting integrity. This, so this is a distraction from talking no, about. No, you said here. the yeah. threat to no, democracy. Well, so there is no voter fraud. That's the thing. Oh, there and when there oh is, how do you know? Well, what? because there are in cases of it, it gets investigated. Uh, and when there is, oh. it's Republicans. <laughs> Listen to her. Okay. Listen to her, guys. The narrative is that Democrats. They always want to point the, what they call it? Blame shifting, guys. I learned a new word. Blame shift. That's their favorite thing to do. If they can't blame it on Donald Trump, they blame it on his supporter. They say it's the Republicans now. Oh, my. Oh. It's Republicans. <laughs> what? Okay. The narrative is that Democrats are obsessed with January 6th. But the reality is that Donald Trump is the one who's obsessed with 2020. Even today, he was on stage in Michigan saying, I won, and I won by an even bigger margin than 2016. Maybe he should be quiet about it, but he can't stop himself, which puts it into the national discourse. There is and he brought it up on stage, but they've been bringing up every single debate that I've watched, even the one with J.D. Vance, Tim Waltz, they brought up J6 2020. Guys, it's not just Donald Trump. It's the left wing media who is fixated on trying to push this narrative out there so that they can kind of solidify the folks who are still in support of Kamala Harris to say this guy does not care about democracy, trying to fear monger them into voting for Kamala Harris. It's just really sad to watch. Be quiet about it but he can't stop himself, which puts it into the national discourse. There is new information in this filing, 165 pages. <clears throat> there has to be something new. We <laughs> know so. for sure now that Donald Trump knew he lost, even though Jesse says he didn't know. And we know because he told his kids on Marine One, even it doesn't matter if you won or lost, you have to fight like hell. We knew. You can't say that he knew he lost if he's still pushing the narrative and saying that he won at just you just were complaining that he's still bringing it up at rally saying that he won. He knows he won. You can't push the narrative now and say that he knew he lost because he still to this day thinks that he won in 2020. You can't prove differently. Marine won. Even it doesn't matter if you won or lost, you have to fight like hell. We knew he didn't care if Mike Pence lived or died. Now we know that he said, so what? And that there were 71 threats against Mike Pence, so bad that Mark Short That's had to go to the- That's need no. cross-examination. No. It's not true unless oh, it's okay. tested. Mark Short went to the Secret Service to say that he was scared for his life. You have anecdotes. But like, all those things are not, no. all, I knew all that. Yeah. You knew no, that said, new. so what? And you it's knew been, that it's, you it's knew within the, the spirit of everything that has been written and said about Did this Did you know before. about Ronna McDaniel going to the election official in Michigan who said that's effing nuts? What it, he's it, it is in keeping with everything else I know about it and everything else that she said. Jesse, go ahead. Wanda the stuff. Wow. Absolutely shut down. Don't ask me why I just lost where my camera was at for a second there. But Dana just shut her down saying, where was there any new information? Yeah, it's 165 page. You would think in a new 165 page filing, there would be some new evidence, something new brought by Jack Smith. But no, I told you guys, he's literally just dressing this up to make it all look like this was in a personal capacity where Donald Trump was a private citizen, not the president. Guys, it sounds crazy because Jack Smith is just that far gone. I'm telling you right now. Could you with everything else I know about it and everything else that she said? Jesse, go ahead. Wanda the stuffer, by the way, is a Democrat. Wanda? What? You don't watch Wanda. Jesse Waters primetime? How dare you? I have Just children. An <laughs> <laughs> well, they can watch. It's PG-13, Jessica. <laughs> so the Supreme Court comes down with this ruling that presidents have full immunity when they're conducting official acts. Phone calls, talking unofficial. to people in Not departments. Yet. Fake electors. It hasn't been determined. No, what Amy they're Tony saying, Barrett Jessica, is it. like if Donald Trump goes out to the golf course as president and sees the cart girl look at him funny and smacks her teeth out with a five iron that is not an official act 
That is an act as a private citizen. So what this guy Jack Smith does, he gets the ruling. He basically takes out every time it says President Trump, he crosses it off and then he writes private citizen Trump and he leaves the whole thing the same. Yes. So yes. he's saying that from the election until January 6, he wasn't President Trump. He was private citizen Trump. And how does he prove that? Well, I read this motion and he says, this is why, Jessica, when he went on to give his speech on January 6, they didn't play hail to the chief. They played the village people. Man. <laughs> they played YMCA. So that means he's not president during that speech. Yep. <laughs> why didn't you? It's not a serious you know motion. What? That's something I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, there you no, go. I didn't That's know that. Why did he use private lawyers instead of his White House counsel if it wasn't private? I don't know why he Everybody did what. I know you guys are desperate. Advice. And you first, ever get a second opinion? You put 150. Th right. You ever got a second opinion, guys? Jesse Waters hitting that nail right on the head. Side judge's name, guys. We're saying this guy, Jack Smith, like I said on the front half, he literally just went through the 165 page filing. If you really look into it, there is nothing changed whatsoever. This guy literally just crossed off Preston Trump wherever it was, uh, it appeared on the filing and then changed it over to private citizen Donald Trump. I'm telling you that right now, this guy, Jack Smith is far gone, guys. He's insane. He's nuts. He I, I know you guys are desperate. Advice. And you first, a second opinion? you put a $150,000 bounty in a public filing last week. And now this, it's prejudicial For Wanda and Lewis you should Scott be ashamed of yourself. And also, why does it matter if he says whether you win or lose, fight like hell? That's great advice yeah. that you go down swinging. They always take the words literally like when he said he had to find votes. They say, oh, he's making up votes. No, he said there's yeah. votes out there. You got to find him. And if you if you if you want to if you're fighting, you fight like hell, whether you win or you lose. That's just no, the way it don't, is. No, because you lost, so you can see it and oh. act like a normal no, human. No, you fight until it's over. Is it, it that simple? He doesn't think it's over You guys today. did it. Hillary really fought like he hell. He thinks he won. That's I why we loved Hillary. I'm having a great time, but I'm going to tease. Yo, there we have it, guys. I don't know how much longer we could put up with this. Jessica Tarlov, that Trump derangement syndrome, where she's living in a completely different world, trying to push the narrative to say that Jack Smith's uh, latest 165 page filing is a brand new and Donald Trump is about nailed to the coffin behind it. It's not the truth whatsoever. We all can see straight through the sham that is the supposed special counsel, Jack Smith, the same guy who was illegitimately appointed by Attorney General Merrick Garland to serve as special counsel. This guy is not supposed to be sitting in the seat that he currently holds. He has no power to be bringing anything or file anything for that matter. I can definitely see this whole thing getting tossed aside, just like what we've seen down um, in Florida with Judge Eileen Cannon, the classified documents case. I mean, this guy this guy, Jack Smith, is one of the pushiest prosecutors I've seen yet. This guy just will try to push through our court system, you know, um, blatantly ignoring all the rules and regulations of how our court is supposed to work, the procedures. This guy does not care. He's going to do whatever it takes to try to get to Donald Trump. I mean, we're seeing that he doesn't even have the common decency to uh, use the 30-day rule as far as trying to come after, prosecute a presidential candidate within 30 days of the race. This guy is showing he does not care about any of that. He has one thing on his mind, and that's to get to Donald Trump. Reminds me of all these other rogue agents that have been trying to come after Donald Trump with these charades shim cases they're after one thing get donald trump or get in the way his chances of sitting in that seat of the white house later on this year i'm not sure how long the other hosts are going to be able to put up with jessica tarloff and that trump derangement syndrome false reality world she's living in guys hop in the comment section let me know your thoughts how much longer do you think fox News will put the other hosts through this torture that is jessica tarloff hop in the comment section let me know your thoughts also make sure you guys hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you'd enjoy more content like this catch you guys on the next one week yeah.